So today we have a very special guest. We have one of the first NBA guests, and we wanted to bring in one of the greatest minds in basketball. We wanted to kick off this uh, next segment of the Jackson podcast with uh, someone that's just known worldwide to being an icon and a legend. And uh, we have Jerry West in the house, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only one of the greatest to ever do it. And he's here to uh, really just give us a, an inside look on the history of the game and, and what his mind is. It's an honor, sir, to sit here with you with my co-hosts, Rampage Jackson and Luke Rockhold. Well, it, it's a pleasure, actually, because one of the things I've always done in my life was when I was a little kid, grew up in a small little town, and um, I remember the old TV sets that were this big. No one had them, and this one family got one, and they used to have Wednesday, Wednesday night fights and either Friday or Saturday night fights. And I used to go there and watch the, the, the fights all the time. I was always fascinated about it. And uh, actually, my interest has spread now to watch you guys fight. And yeah. uh, completely different, by the way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, you guys are fighting. Okay? Yeah. yeah, it's, it's a real fight. <laughs> it's not that's boxing. That's it's exactly a, right. Yeah. But um, I think I've always said the most competitive people play the most competitive games. And some people talk about it and, oh, I could do this. No, they, they, they couldn't because some people are not tough-minded enough. And that, I think, applies to all sports, to be honest with you. When you put in a big match or something, you know you have to – if you're not ready to fight, bad things are going to happen. It's a competitive spirit. You know, I've seen enough of your games to – you throw your body everywhere. Like, you got in there and got rough and rowdy and just went went to town. And that's what what earned you, obviously, you know, how you dictated games. Came in there and – I mean, a little undersized, right? right. <laughs> no, not really. But, I'm, but, I'm bigger than people think I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they say. Uh, yeah. But I think the biggest, I think the biggest thing is that um, when I look back, the things that kill you as a basketball player are any kind of knee injuries. Okay, and at one at one time, if you got operated on for certain things like an ACL as a basketball player, you were finished. Wow, you were finished wow. because. Now the modern medicine have helped helped these athletes so much. The only thing I had, I had nine broken noses in play. And, then, <laughs> and once that. you have them, uh, hey, you probably had some too. Right? <laughs> I've had a couple. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but anyway, that's the only thing. But uh, you go out and play. If I mean, you get stitches. They said that get your fanny out there. But today the players, uh, it's a real special place for the players today because they're united and, uh, you know, the financial rewards are incredible. But. It is so selective. Only 440 people can play professional basketball in this country at any given time. Mm. So you'd better be damn good because you got people all over the world. The, the, the four top players in our league are from uh, not they weren't born in America. Mm. Wow! And so it's a world reach uh, today. Um, Did you invent basketball? Heck no. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, <laughs> mentally I did. Yeah. Mentally yeah. I did. I used to, I, when, I say when you grew up in a small little place and no one else liked to do what I like to do. When did you start? When did you start shooting hoops? Oh, about, what, 10 or 11? Yeah. And I'm kind of a solitary person anyway. And uh, you could go out there and make yourself be the best player in the world. You were the referee, the coach, <laughs> and the timekeeper in particular. And so you could go out and – make the last second shot. And um, um, I had people, or writers in particular, why aren't you afraid to do this? I said, I've done it a million times. Yeah. And he, what are you talking about? I says, when I was a boy, I said, I could find a way to put one second on the shot clock and make that shot. And I might miss it 10 times. But I was driven, uh, I always have been. And the competitive side to life is what what I thrive for and what I it would encourage everyone else. Mm-hmm. That's a good mindset. That's Absolutely. a good mindset to have. Yeah. Jerry, as a former Laker, 69 to 74, former coach and GM of the Lakers, eight-time champion as an NBA executive, you helped draft Kobe, helped facilitate Shaq to the Lakers. Overall, your legendary playing career, coaching career, executive career, overall, which one was the most fulfilling for you? You know, as a player, um, I had a lot of disappointments as a player. We got to, made the finals nine times. And unfortunately, Boston was there uh, with a team that had Bill Russell, and we didn't have a kind of a, a player that could erase mistakes that other people would make defensively. And 
it is horrible to sit in the locker room and my my goodness, uh, my playoff numbers were crazy, just crazy. I, I think one series uh, I averaged forty seven points a game with uh, Elgin Baylor was out, and I guess a good team. They, they they were the Baltimore Bullets then. Now they're the Washington Wizards, and they had a really good team and. The coach came to me and said, oh, listen to this. He said, if you really play well and get us to the second round of the playoff, he said, I'll make sure you get more money next year. I said, yeah. So we get there, and the coach forgot all about it very conveniently. <laughs> 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 but, you know, I've seen a lot of things in my life, and um, it's just remarkable uh, what has happened to sports today um, in all fields. Um all of a sudden, women are getting recognized for their talents. And it really has come a long way. And for basketball players in particular, the money is just – we're going to have a $100 million player now, I think, about four more years. Wow. Per, yeah. per year. And is it, too late? is it too late for me to start going playing basketball? Yeah. Uh, how much bounce do you have? I suck at basketball. <laughs> I, for, for, for $100 million, I can learn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, it, as I say, there's a lot of competition. These kids today are like, you know, you grow up and almost all of them are great ball handlers today. And sometimes that is a art that you want to have. But if you dribble all the time, it makes it very, very difficult to have a team. I heard Luke Cockho is real good at ball handling as well. Right. <laughs> Reason, right. <laughs> well, balancing. Yeah, I, don't, you know. I don't know if that's going to pertain to this conversation. Do but, you guys do things but, for balance? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I mean, I, I actually played ball. My dad played uh, played two summer leagues with the Warriors. Right. Played oh. in Europe for a few years. Oh, great. Played in Italy and France and everybody. And I, 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 I won the AAU championship. Can you slam dunk? I, I beat Oakland when I was, when I was a kid. Yeah, we beat Oakland AAU championships. Oh, great. Fantastic. Yeah, so I, I played some ball. Growing up, at a young right. age, you know. Well, it's you know what it, it, it really kind of a, the best team game, and I say because you look at football, there's two separate teams: mm. uh, a defensive team and an offensive. Basketball, you have to be if you're going to stand among the crowd, you must be able to play both ends of the court, and that probably was my strongest suit when I first started it in the league. Mm. And then you you know you evolve and and become something different because a coach pushes you in that direction. But uh, with all sports, uh, it's a it's a learning curve for you. When you first started out, uh, were you, do you know what to expect? Probably not. I'm sure you didn't. You say, no. hey, I think I can do this. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect. What was the dif most difficult task in the first fight? The most difficult task for me was cutting weight. My first fight, it was, uh, you know, amateur. I was cutting weight, and the guy was a little bit smaller than me, and it was like a last minute. I took the fight on three minutes, I mean, three days notice. Oh, my gosh. And and I had to cut weight, and I'm in there cutting weight. I'm a wrestler, so I know how to cut weight. I didn't right. think it was a big deal, but they kept going in there and making me weight. I said, I know I'm on weight. Then next thing you know, the guy weighing me in, we kept saying I wasn't on weight, right? Then I go out there and fight, and he's in my opponent's corner. Oh, my God. So he was cheating. I made weight. <laughs> I made weight probably the first time, but he kept draining me like I didn't make weight because you're not supposed to cut weight and fight the same day. Right, that's, that's, right. Not, that's not right. But it was, right. that's what I had to do. But that was, my biggest, that was my biggest challenge was making the weight for that first fight. And, and what was um, – if you had any fears of – both of you, if you had any fears in your first fight, what, 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 what would that might be? I mean, there's just so many outcomes. You never know, really know what's coming on. That's right. that's the fun part about it. And that's the challenging part about it. It's just walking into a space where it just it's it tests every part of your your physical and your mental abilities. Right. And it's just it's 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 nothing like you can really put better have words. courage. Right? Put into words. <laughs> well, but but me, that feeling of overcoming it is, right. is something you'll never want to. But, but for me, it was always the fear of getting embarrassed by getting knocked out or something like that. Absolutely. That's the that's the biggest thing, like being embarrassed because in fighting, it's just you and that other guy. You know, it's not a team where you can like, you can, you know, get on someone. No, you got to pick it up. No, it's me. I got to pick it up. And if I go out there and get knocked out in front of all my friends and family and my coach and stuff, that's, that's the fear for me, embarrassing my team. Well, know? I tell you what, and, and, you know, I think that's like these kids today or when, when I started, uh, when I was first came in the NBA, you know, you read all these names and everything, and you start, oh, my gosh, this guy has to really be good. It was probably the biggest shock I ever got uh, when I first played my first exhibition game. And – there were a couple of players on that respective team were, that were really highly ranked. Everyone knew them. Uh, it was 
really kind of crazy. And here I'm out there playing against them. After the game, and I was really quiet. I mean, shy, shy as can be. And after that game, I walked out of there, and I only played about 15 minutes. And I was the second player taken in the draft. But the thing that the thing that was remarkable about I said to myself, if these guys are great players, I'm going to be better. I'm going to be better. But the thing that makes you better ultimately is your obviously your skill and learning how to play with people and also, you know, how dedicated you are. I used to sit in a locker room for a game, sweat just used to pour off my hands. And it's just like there's so much adrenaline in your body. You get to the point where you can't sleep after a game. And at that point in time, sometimes you had to play three nights in a row and you didn't fly private. But there's so many things I learned about myself during that period of time that, um, you know, you can be your best some night and your team doesn't have it. But you guys get exposed, I guess, because there's no one in there to help you or you don't have any teammates. Right, yeah. Yeah. No one. No doubt. Yeah, that's the biggest thing about fighting is it's just you. You can have all the preparation you want. You can have a great coach, great camp, great team, but these guys have to go in there and do the work. You know, Jerry, during uh, um, the time where the world was locked down, uh, I spent a lot of time with you on the phone, and you were so gracious, and you were talking to me about basketball, and um, we were talking about social media and the potential of launching, you know, your social media and campaigns, and you were very cautious because of you're so honorable and, and the legacy you have, you want it to be told correctly. And one of the things that I, I really was just loved about <clears throat> listening to you talk was the way you talked about the, the Kobe and the drafting of Kobe and the story of Kobe. I'd love for you to elaborate on that, about that whole situation. Well, you know, I think most people have, uh, they're aware of that he got here, okay? But there's a, there was a, a bigger prize there, and that was Shaquille O'Neal. It's one of the greatest free agents uh, free agency period we've ever had. I mean, there's a bunch of really good, about five really good players. And so our sights were set on him, and he was in Orlando at that point in time. And his agent was here in Los Angeles. We'd been friends for a long time before I, uh, before he had represented Shaquille. And so uh, we started talking, and, and um, it was really one of the most difficult things that, that I felt more tired when this was over with and I'll tell you why. So we're trying to get him. And at the same time, we know that he's going to be a, a huge contract for that point in time. So we got to a certain point. We uh, negotiated a contract with him. And uh, we couldn't meet their demands. So we took an all-star center, or, or not an all-star center, but a really good center, traded him. We tried to trade him from the first pick to way down to – Kobe at 13, I, uh, yeah, 13, I believe. And so anyway, to make a long story short, <clears throat> I, didn't have any, I didn't think there was any way that we could get Kobe Bryant along with Shaquille O'Neal. But you have to have a wish list in life, and if you're competitive, you're going to try to go out there and achieve that. And so all of a sudden, I was talking to Jerry Buss all the time then, who was the owner, owner of the lake, and I said, Jerry, I said, we have to make this trade – and I said, starting center, and I said, if we don't get Shaquille O'Neal, there's M uh, Matumbo was out there, who was a very good defensive player. And so he Dumbo. was our he was our Come fallback on. guy. I haven't <laughs> seen you guys do that. <laughs> he was our fall he was our fallback guy, but but all of a sudden we got in a situation where he, he agreed to come to us, okay? Uh, every agent says you can't get him, you can't get him, of course, and and uh, I think it was a determination of of uh, the franchise and Jerry Buss encouraging me to me, just go forward. So we tried to make this trade so we could get under the salary cap enough to get Shaquille O'Neal. And we did. And that, that uh, player happened to be Kobe Bryant. And um, we had worked him out, and he was just – uh, I guess in your field, you see fighters that are exceptional, but can they withstand the test of time? That's, to me, it's all sports, and that's how greatness and where people, you know, they're always talking about the goat this, the goat that. Uh, Perseverance. Oh, yeah. yeah. Perseverance, <laughs> dedication. It's like you you went through 
what eight championships or right. seven before you won yours? Yeah, uh, yes. I mean, and you got you got MVP with losing. Like, how's that? Did that twice, by the way, in college also. Yeah, and, and then how, how does that make one. you feel? It makes you feel horrible. How does? How, how, <laughs> yeah. how about uh, when you when you um then they like in one of the finals you guys were a real close game with with Boston right and then they benched like they had some some beef with the coach and then they benched a. Uh, uh, Will Chamberlain. Will Chamberlain. Well, actually, he had, he had hurt himself. And our coach, and it, it was really crazy then. Um, players players and coaches then did not get along. They yeah. just did not. And because everyone, I need to play, I need to play, I want to play. Well, sometimes sometimes if somebody's hurt, they're not going to play, and you know how important they are in your team. But that was one of the most awkward things. I did not know to the extent of his injury. And he talked to the coach, and the coach didn't put him back in the game. And obviously, I thought it was a mistake um, and really never got into it. But it, it's, just, it's just really difficult because I've had, I think as a professional player, I think I had five coaches. Whatever they asked me to do, I would do it. I, I just didn't want to bitch or complain or, uh, you know, uh, the, our championship year, uh, Bill Russell. I mean, not Bill Russell, but Bill Sharman, who played for the Celtics, and I played against him. He became our coach, and he said to me before the start of the season, he said, I want you to lead the league in, in, uh, in assists. I don't want you to lead the league in scoring. And so I led the league in assists, but still averaged like almost 26 a game. Most fun I've ever had to play, ever had on a team that was really a team. We could win any kind of game, uh, you know, uh, uh, a physical game, a uh, half-court game, a defensive game. But an offensive game, uh, you weren't going to beat this team. I mean, we could score like crazy. But the adaptability of players to go when Bill came in and said, hey, we're going to do this, the adaptability of players, and particularly if you played a certain way for a long time, is very, very difficult. But, it, again, it was like, you know, the difference um, – the difference in if you want to be a horse is behind anything, <laughs> anything to try to win at the top level. And the top level, of course, is winning an NBA championship. And it was um, a crazy period for me. Uh, you know, I was getting to the point where uh, I was, I knew I wasn't going to play much longer. But again, the dedication was always there. But I stopped playing when I would have been the first million dollar player in the NBA. I stopped playing. I just said, I can't do it anymore. You got tired uh, of it? Uh, well, I just, you know, I just, what else are the, is there a, to give? You know, you have to be able to give every time you go out there and play. You have to be focused. And, again, it came down to in a locker room in an exhibition game, no sweat on my hand. And we played Bill Russ, uh, uh, Bill Walton's team at uh, in Portland, and they oh, wow. were very good. And, Last game I ever played is an exhibition game, and I played really well. And uh, I told the coach, I called the coach and the general manager, and I said, I'm not going to play anymore. And I honestly, they were so mad at me. I couldn't figure this out. You know, if I was going to play, you know, a big pot of gold then, a million dollars was a lot then, and still is, by the way. But, um, I just couldn't do it. And they were, I mean, I was like persona non grata. I didn't even feel welcome around there anymore. Mm, wow. And um, I was fortunate that, um, you know, when Jerry Busk uh, came in, I was the coach of the team, and uh, I knew that wasn't for me. I expected way too much of the players and, uh, and be committed. And that was a crazy time for the NBA. Oh, my gosh. It was like. Crazy. Were you already the logo sign, or did that come later after you retired? Well, yeah, I'm always reluctant to talk about that. I think that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if people call you the logo as a nickname. Well, they do. A lot of people do, mm -hmm. and particularly players, and, and from even today, some of the players will call me that. But uh, I think the most you got that swag. Proud. You got that little swag. Little. Oh yeah. Hey, oh, yeah. come on, Jerry. You gonna give us a little swag? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> come on, get it. Keep this across. Yeah. Well, today, you know, today my hand will be under the ball because you couldn't. Yeah. I mean, you carry the ball all over the place today. But uh, this how the game. You know, the game has changed so much, and if you can't change with any any sport or any game, you're probably going to fall behind. 
you know, who ever thought that we'd see teams shoot 50 three-point shots in a night? 50 yeah. or more. Speaking of the three-point line. You, you can't play yeah. defense. If they you just let somebody hit you all the time, you, yeah. it's not going to feel good, okay? Yeah. They didn't even have the three-point line when he was playing. No. And he still put up more points than probably everybody. I think on the list, you're still top 30 most yeah. points. Well, yeah, yeah. 25,000. I think the number of games I played, I don't. Even, I played less, less, than, a than, a, less than a 1,000. And uh, wow. if I could have stayed healthy, I had a chronic hamstring pull, honestly, right in the height of my career. And there's, you know, they have no, they didn't treat it then. You look at football players, and the, the kid the other day from San Francisco, the linebacker who got hurt. Did you see how he got hurt? He was over there jumping like this. He was going into the game, and they said yeah. that he had an Achilles tear. Yeah, I mean it's. He was on the sidelines, ready to run in. Right, Jerry. When you were talking about the Kobe story earlier, one thing is that you you mentioned Shaq so much, and you guys were so, you know. Uh, efficient on wanting to get him but what was it about kobe that wasn't on that same level of radar did his stardom did you guys not see it yet did you not see the success or the greatness yet to me i it's a, it it's was the easiest player. draft pick ever uh, got it at that time it was in vogue unless you were 610 or more to be drafted high school kids getting drafted yeah and yeah. kevin garnett was a perfect example he was tall but kobe I just, it's hard for me to believe that people pass on him. His passion, his, uh, his dedication to the game. He had a, had a great smile. He had everything going for him. But on top of it, he was a, people call him dogs. I call him wolves. Wolves kill dogs. 100%. 100. And, wow. 100. and uh, he was a wolf, okay? Uh, early on in his career, um, you know, he had a, the players called him Showboat, and and I spent a lot of time with him the first two years, and uh, just to hear him talk, and uh, you know, he was he was really bright. On top of it, his father Joe, his nickname was Jelly Bean. <laughs> Jelly Bean. <laughs> I wouldn't want that nickname I, if I were if I were I a, prefer uh, the if wolf. I were a player. <laughs> <laughs> but he was he's a great guy. But anyway, uh, through Arn Tellum, who was his agent at that point in time, he sort of, they, and the family told New Jersey was going to draft him, and uh, what, like seven or something like that. And they talked him out of drafting him. And it was good fortune uh, for us to get him. And I told Shaquille along the way, I said, Shaquille, we, we drafted a kid that you're not going to believe how good he is. I said, he's 17 years old. He couldn't even sign a contract Wow! because the old movie laws where kids, uh, when they were, weren't a certain age. Yeah. And he was, he was a breath of fresh air. He really was. I mean, he was so competitive. And he was going around all the time that summer, and I, I'll never forget it. He would be playing pickup games on the beach and everything. I told him, I said, Kobe, you can't do that. You're going to get hurt. So about, I think, Four days, four or five days before training camp, I get a call from our trainer. He said, well, uh, I said, yeah, he hurt himself. He said, you're right. He said, I think he broke his uh, his wrist or some, something. On the street ball court? But it was on it was at Venice Beach. He heard Venice it. homies, yeah. That's, that's and awesome. so I, he and I had a long conversation, but I'll never forget training camp. We used to go over there all the time to Hawaii. Jerry Buss loved it over there. Had a lot of fans then. And he was over there with this cast on him. It was on his right hand, okay? So he was constantly shooting with his left hand. And he got to the point where it looked like he was really ambidextrous. But wow, it, there's some incredible stories on him, some very touching. And even to this day, um, and I went to the unveiling of the statue downtown. And, and one of the things that I was most taken by, how many fans he still has, and uh, he was, I think, because of the way he passed away, uh, how, if you noticed last week, there were like three helicopters crashes last yeah, week. You yeah, heard about uh, that. Yeah. 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 yeah, the Marine uh, and, helicopter. And, and someone from, uh, yeah, the, from an African country yeah, that was, I Nigerian, think they were going to Vegas. Uh, president. Well, they're really, the Super they're, Bowl. helicopters are really dangerous. Yeah. But anyway, I think the thing that, that, that I look at all the time in my family room in my house I have this picture of him and little girl Gigi, and they're sitting on 
the floor seats at the Laker game. And she's cuddled up against him, and he's looking at her, and she's looking at him. It was It's one of the most touching pictures that I've ever seen. And there's not a week that goes by that I don't make sure I where I have it that I look at. Yeah. Yeah. I always do. Yeah. And he was he's a special player. Uh, he was going to be a bigger success. He was really bright. Nice. And he was the first one, really, honestly, that got on the bandwagon for women. Uh-huh. And now you see all these in some really incredible players. My goodness, these girls are really getting better and better. So they, I think through his efforts, and uh, uh, he made it, he made it, in my opinion, he made it something special for women to say, I can do this when people tell them they can't. Right. Mm-hmm. He, was a good, uh, he was a good guy. My daughter played <clears throat> against his daughter. Right. And he and my daughter told me he was the coach. Right. He was coaching. And my, my right. daughter played. Yeah. She knew she played against him. Oh, my, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. And right. I met Kobe one time. I went to the Lakers game. Uh-huh. And I, was, I guess I was sitting close. And he, he recognized me. I didn't know he knew who I was. And um, I met his wife, and he took me backstage and everything. And oh, that's him. I, yeah, he was really that's nice. him. I hit on a, 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 a you know, one of those cheerleaders, and I got kicked out of there. <laughs> right, I should have kept my well, mouth shut. Yeah, yeah the, the Lakers. Kobe, Kobe's a big fan of fighting too. He used to, yeah. he came oh, supported yeah. fighting like yeah. from the, yeah. one of the first guys to come over and really kind of show support yeah. and love. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. No, he's I mean, in the game. You know, I, I sit at home and I watch it. As I told you, I, I'm a fan. Okay, uh, because boxing is say now the. The great fighters never fight each other, yeah. and they'll fight one time of the year, and yeah. uh, they make thirty, so fifty million dollars, and they go back and fight again. But if, if MMA was around before you got into basketball, would you have been a fighter? I love boxing. You would have been a boxer. I, I don't know if I would have been, but I used to have a. <laughs> when you're young and you don't have anything, I used to. Ha- I made a punching bag. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and First and time. and it's just something from. Watching these really tough guys and how much more difficult it really is. But, you know, there's like one boxer today that I think is incredible is Bud Crawford. Mm-hmm. Uh, he fought um, yeah, was the last, his last big fight. Uh, he fought, um, oh my God. Spence. Uh, yeah, Spence. Spence. He's yeah. as, he, as methodical he, as it gets, he's just minds in the game. He just doesn't get hit. Yeah. He's so good defensively. And that's what I've always liked watched in in your sport yeah. the guys that get hit too much are not going to make it okay <laughs> right. not. Yeah. you have to learn to be just better defensively and also seize the moment when there's one there and you can see it better than anyone else yeah. right. but I, I, the other night i sat at my house and um i was watching youtube <laughs> and i was watching the um uh oh my gosh the guy who uh, from was kazakhstan uh yeah, Habib. 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 Oh my gosh, that guy was so good. And you know, some everyone said, "Well, you know, he's going to do this." I don't care how good you were; he was going to put you on a canvas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he had the instincts to do it, yeah. and the skill to do it, and he was yeah. really tough. Yeah, he was, he was yeah. really tough. But all Luke those kids are coming. Yeah. There's a lot he's of them my, over he's there my now. teammate. That kind of and he trained took him under my wing when he first showed oh, up really? in the United yeah. States. Yeah. What kind of person was? He? I mean, he was just. He was the. <laughs> is the hardest worker. I mean, like he he literally showed up by himself at, at our gym up in San Jose, California, and I was like, "Who is this kid?" And he was just like, right. he was running around the gym, just like just so gritty and so right. hardworking. And it was like he kept coming after me, and he was such a small guy. Right. I was like, <clears throat> "What is that?" Hold on, one sec. The- What's going on here? Who's playing soft jazz? I think that's uh, Jerry West. Jerry. He Jerry, played- was that you playing soft <laughs> jazz? <laughs> if that me, what is your ringtone? Soft jazz. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. my goodness, do I have my phone on? Yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry, don't worry. We hey, like no, the soft jazz. I, I, soft jazz. Right, we'll, I we'll, thought I we'll, left in the car. No, that was nice. Yeah, we'll, no, we'll, we'll, let, we'll let you slide this time. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was nice. I'm uh, sorry, I apologize. No, no Jerry, that was amazing. Leave yeah. that in there. I like Jerry's soft <laughs> jazz ringtone. Yeah. Jerry, one of the things that I really loved about what you said because I'm an LA guy, so I'm a Laker fan, but I'm a I'm really good friends with Paul George and, and, I, and I love Zoo. These guys have been supporting my brand for years in my paintball parks, SC Village. Paul George was one of the first to ever uh, come to my paintball park. That's how I became friends with everybody. But originally I met everyone through Kobe. 
Kobe did his daughter's birthday party at my paintball park. That's right. And then uh, Rampage was was there. Anderson Silva was there. They were all there at my park that day. So it was a unique experience for me meeting Kobe. Then I met D'Angelo Russell and Jordan Clarkson. And, and through that circle, Kobe kind of co-signed and let me uh, <coughs> do videos like backstage with the Lakers right. at my paintball park. So he was really instrumental in helping me kind of bring celebrity content and athletes to my my facility. So I was forever indebted to him. And then he did his daughter's birthday party there and it went crazy. And he used to sit, uh, uh, he used to come to my dad's charity event in downtown LA, 10,000 kids, they would give away toys and Kobe would show up and sign autographs, take photos. Phenomenal due to uh, the community. So I know the impact he had. When you talk about impact in LA though, as an organization, I saw a quote from you that said that the Clippers organization is the best organization you've ever been a part of. Is that a well, true quote? Well, it is. It is in this sense. Okay, it's the hardest working group of bunch of people I've ever seen. Unbelievably, um, unbelievably, um, the the amount of people there and the amount of money spent on trying to stay ahead of everyone else. But franchises are judged by how many championships they've won. Mm-hmm. That's how they're judged, and. This is a town for the Clippers to get a foothold. God, we've got to win at a greater level, and particularly when it matters most, uh, the things, that, the historical things. And your sport, uh, uh, there's th- times you remember, times you don't. But from a perspective of that, I mean, we have l- legions of people working for us in the basketball department. When I was with the Lakers, we had a very small group, but we had a an owner that was just fantastic to work with was Jerry Buss. And uh, he, and I didn't like, you know, I, I'm not a big analytical person. I'm not. Uh, sometimes it's very difficult to see uh, inside of someone, you know, their heart, their head. And I've always said what's important is invisible to the eye. Mm-hmm. You just have to be able to jump in someone's body and, try to see, you know, how they're connected to the sport. How much does it mean to them? As I mentioned today, uh, the money is incredible, and so there's more competition today. But the the greatest times I ever had in my life, obviously, were, uh, you know, I was thrust into a role as a general manager because Bill Sharman was the general manager. He couldn't talk. And so I basically was fortunate, I guess, to, he trusted me to do something, and I felt I got better every year, particularly how you treat people, how you interact with people. Make them welcome. The uh, most disarming thing in the world is a smile. Mm-hmm. It is a smile. And we had a lot of fun, but didn't have very many people. And, I mean, it's carried on. They are they have one of the most elite players we've ever seen in LeBron James, and it's remarkable what he does at this age. But I want to ask you something. In your sport, how how, how long can you you guys fight? Well, <laughs> I'm older than you, right? Yeah. You know, I haven't I haven't <laughs> I haven't fought in like four years and um I'm gonna do a boxing my, my first boxing match in June. Okay. I'm fighting this guy named Shannon <clears throat> Shannon Briggs. He's about your height. I was gonna ask you you wanna be my sparring partner. <laughs> well, as I say, I told you I don't think that would be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little long in the tooth, as they say. <laughs> so I think I think in MMA, um, I think you, you know we we've had fighters that that fought all the way up to their fifties. But oh my goodness, yeah, but you know, um, but it's it's still a rev- relatively young sport. Right. But I think um, if you keep your, your yourself together and you stay, you know, you stay healthy, I think you can fight up to your fifties. But you shouldn't fight young people. Right, no. right. You decline. I mean, like late late thirties, I'd say late thirties is like where you like you're gonna see a slowdown and, right, and what's right. what, and depending on how much you enjoy yourself after the fights. Right. In between the fights, there's, there's there's no like it's not like a season. You know what I mean? It's like fighting is you pick fights within the year, and sometimes you have a long layoff, and so it's it's hard to keep your focus. Injuries mount up, you right. know, and then those injuries kind of drive you insane too within the space, right? Right, right. I well, mean, I, you know, I just say, I, I to me the most like football is a very physical game, yeah. but if you guys don't like what you're doing, um, you're not going to succeed. Right. You have to love what you're doing, and I don't care what it is in life. Uh, I've always been a goal setter for myself. There's certain things that are important to me. I constantly write notes down to myself. Um, when I was a kid, I used to write in 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 my own little words. 
I'd put up there, uh, you know, I'm going to shoot a 300 shots today, okay? And I got to the point where if I didn't do that, I was disappointed in myself. So why even have goals? Mm. Goals should be written down. Mm. And you should talk to people about them. And if you do that, you won't give up. Some people hit a wall and they say, I can't get through there. Oh, yes, you can. You have to persevere. You have to, again, have that dedication that you guys have had. And as I told you both, I it's amazing to watch you guys in the ring. And I, I always say to myself, what would I be thinking if I were in, in the ring? I knew what I thought was a basketball player. Uh, just go and compete. And I felt skill from a skill perspective and from a, a competitive perspective, uh, no one was going to top that. We might lose a game. But for me, no, I, just, I was just driven to – to be the best I could be uh, within a framework of being a, you know, a teammate. Mm -hmm. And you guys are such an individual sport. Yeah. And, you know, just as I, I mentioned to both of you, I, I, I would love to come to a gym sometime when you guys are training. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're welcome. Come down right yeah. here at the Jackson House. We're, That's we're why about we're building build it the gym. Out here. Yeah, we're building this gym here as a recovery and a wellness center for our athletes. So our fight team and all of the athletes, because we, we sponsor athletes in skate and moto and mixed martial arts so they can all kind of come together as a community. One of the things when you talk about athletes and goal setting, it's so it's so uh, unique the way you describe it because you, you speak in such a tone where you just have to listen, you know, because you're so iconic. One of the things that you've said before about players is the way players operate as a team and what they do. And you as a general manager and an executive, do you feel like for example, when you won the MVP in the finals and, and your team still lost, do you feel that there's players in today's game that are good enough to win championships, but they'll never get on a good system? Like, do you feel that there's players trapped? Well, you know, today, it, it if you're really good today, uh, you're going to have a lot of teams to bid for you if you want to be an unrestricted free agent. There was one time um, that I wanted to be an unrestricted free agent. I did. Uh, at that point in time, you didn't have agents. You didn't have people that were representing you. And I'm assuming you guys at least have people that have your best interests. Uh, but uh, to me, just, again, just watching the, the development of a sport and, and, and how you adapt to the different things thrown at you. I mean, it's a complete, like, for instance, today basketball is a completely foreign game to me, Okay. Uh, as I say, the three-point line, if you don't live today as a coach and if, you, if you're if you growing up when, uh, you know, they you've, you're out there and a the guy was hitting you in practice and stuff like that, calling you all kind of bad names, that doesn't work today. It doesn't. So the coaches have, have had to be adaptable. Also, the front offices have to be adaptable. You have to be a, a concerned about the the – the salary cap, you know, <laughs> how can I maintain this player? And, again, 440 people, that's pretty darn selective. I mean, you don't want to – if you have one there, sometimes people give up on them too young because they come in at 17, 18 years of age and don't ever do that. I mean, that's that's a crime. Yeah. When did, when did the three-point line come in? How did that come about? I, was it 88? And yeah. that year, after, I think – After your whole career, huh? I'm sorry? After your career? Oh, yeah. yeah. Ended, yeah. Well, anyway, I think that year we won the championship, I believe, and we saw, like, for a whole season, we shot, I think, like 300 and some three-point shots. <laughs> I mean, Te technically, technically oh, yeah. speaking. But that team was, oh, my gosh, you're talking about a basketball team. That, that was, like, the prettiest basketball you ever see. Passing Irvin Johnson out there on his – with his that big smile on his face, directing the play, Abdul Jabbar, who didn't say anything, but he just killed you with his skill. Uh, Michael Cooper, James Worthy. Uh, we had at one time on our team five first round draft picks, wow. five, and wow. traded for them, put them in for a, a specific situation. That is difficult to do with more teams, and uh, obviously the salary issue. So it's wow. so much more. Um, it's so much more complicated today. We see a lot of attorneys involved today in the league, young people who have their own ideas how to uh, put together a franchise and run it. But at the end of the day, the guy, talent wins in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Talent. You might be good in a regular season, but talent 
talent team, will win. Teamwork too, though, right? I mean, like the guys have to mesh together too. You know the talent. Oh yeah, well that's talent, what I say. Talent. If the talent doesn't yeah. mesh together, then well know, that's what I say. How you gonna tell Jerry West? I don't know. I'm, I'm <laughs> no, just, no, 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 no. I'm not saying no. Like I know, no, no. I agree. Look at I the agree. Clippers. You put all these crazy guys in together. And sometimes they just don't. They don't mix well, right? You know, you can watch players today in in, uh, in sports, and you know every in every sport. And particularly basketball, yeah. teams that are not very good teams are going to have someone to sc- score twenty points a game because of the way the game has changed—a mm-hmm. three-point line, uh, you know, more opportunity. But you take that player, and everyone says, "Oh my goodness, we really helped ourselves." You get the guy, and he's just a—he's just a guy. He doesn't do it. But you hit it right on the head. You can identify people that can play together. Yeah. I mean, you go out there and. You watch enough games, and this point of the season, it's like the dog days for the players. I mean, you see some crazy games. Uh, you know, we played last night in Minnesota, and they just destroyed the Clippers. And sitting there watching the game, I said to myself, hmm, okay, these guys need a break, number one. You don't want to rush to judgment on what you think. But um, it was they, – they are really good in both ends of the court, mm. and they're smart. They play hard. And uh, they're one of the most dangerous teams in the league to win a championship, I think. Wow. Minnesota, the young, wow. young they're, legs. They're young huge. Legs. They're huge, Fresh. and they got a kid by the name. Edwards so is, is really good. And, they, I mean, they just got to – they don't – when they go to their bench, they don't get killed when they go to their bench. Yeah. But they've done a great job putting a team together. But, again, they made some trades that – People said, well, they're crazy for doing this. But they had a better idea of their players than other people did. And now here's one of the uh, franchises that's really, really good. I think, again, you know, watching the team, there's a lot of teams in the West who are really good this year. Mm-hmm. But the biggest thing, as I say, if you go into a, a home, not a house, but a home, they're completely different. A house yeah. and a home. A home is, is where you feel comfortable, where there's love, there's warmth. A house is not that. Mm-hmm. And how you decorate the house, if you're decorated, it's the players. And if you've got one piece out of place, it's like, oh, my gosh, that didn't go there. Yeah. And I think with a basketball team, the same thing apply. And um, it is an ever-changing sport. Uh, it's fascinating to me to watch today uh, everything that uh, franchises have to do to uh, uh, to really be competitive. And – the biggest factor are injury factors. Uh, a Memphis. Oh my goodness, they had a really good team. They were they've been decimated by injury. Decimated. Yeah. I've never quite seen anything like it. But yeah. you know, if you lose one of those players that's a an alpha player, yeah, it's gonna hurt. Yeah, they had like ten guys out uh in two two, three games ago. They had like ten guys out. Oh yeah. It's like something unreal like that. When you talk about big guys and you know, players and health. Do you think that the the Kobe Shaq duo is the best duo the NBA has ever seen? Pretty interesting. Uh, uh, I think the way that team played then. Uh, how about Irvin Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? But Shaquille was just embarrassed. I remember that Matumbo was a defensive player of the year, and we the Lakers played him in the finals. And um, Lakers won in five games, and Kareem didn't play the last game. But my fondest memories uh, of uh, the year that they won, my fondest memories of, of uh, Shaquille playing against Matumbo, that there was pictures, that, and Matumbo was big, and he's long, and Shaquille would back him down and dunk on him. And here's these pictures with <laughs> Matumbo like this. And he you could see, he, I didn't see that very much. Really. No, no, no. No, 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 no. no. But, yeah. I mean, it, it, it is pretty remarkable, the respect that players have. And I think it's, it's again, in your sport, uh, people have to respect what you what you are and what you stand for. Mm-hmm. And in basketball, it's, or any sport, it's the same thing. There's some, yeah. there's some people that are just alpha. Yeah, how, they are. how would you rate uh, Michael Jordan and LeBron and Kobe? How would you rate rate them? Who, who would you say number mm. one and two and three? <laughs> That's, the well, <laughs> That's the question. That's the question. Who's your goat after your career? <laughs> well, as I say, I sometimes you have to be politically correct. Yeah, all of them in their own right. Yeah. All of them. Um, it's rare when you see the 
uh, a talent of Michael. Michael Jordan was phenomenal. He was, if you just watch some film of him when he was young, oh my gosh, you're talking about an athlete. Yeah. Uh, but ice cold too. Just oh ice, my God. ice cold. Did you ever want I, to I love get that. Him? Like, I'm sorry? Did you ever want to get him on your team? Oh, I'd love to, but it's, I would be like trying to get into Fort Knox, I guess, where they keep the gold. Uh, he was, no, he was just amazing. And he and I are still friends. Uh, for We've been friends for a long time. And he's really a nice guy. He doesn't change. Uh, he's oh. really pretty grounded. And then LeBron is, you know, it's, I can't believe what he's doing. Utah is talking about fighting some of them in their uh, 50s. Or, I know damn well they weren't as good, uh, good as they are when they were in their 30s or 20s. Right. Uh, he's unbelievable. He, he'll have every record there is. Um, he's a driving force to to win games. Um, oh, and then Kobe, uh, he was just, again, one of those kind of like Michael Jordan, uh, very good all around. Um, and those guys determine games. Well, what helps you determine it, a fight? Is it your training or is it your – uh, Determin your determination really right. yeah. i mean some some of the guys <clears throat> the guys you see aren't the most skilled like this guy who just won the middleweight championship of my weight his name is dracus duplessis uh -huh. and he's not really the most skillful guy but he's so determined and he's so tough in all genres he just he he wills his way to winning and he beats some guys you don't even you don't understand how he beats that ddp mm -hmm. ddp yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah i mean he put i mean he, he beat robert whitaker who was fighting this weekend right. i mean the way he be, be beats these guys you're like it's it's unassuming, but it's he's so disciplined and such a hard worker right. that you know that can that can supersede technique sometimes. Have you right. fought him? Have you fought DDP? I, I trained with him a lot. Did, I trained him out in Florida. He used to come train with us, and yeah. you know I, I, I put it. I, mm -hmm. I put a lot of rounds in with that kid. Right. He's just he's just tough, and he's getting he's getting tougher. So, but well, I think styles it, make matchups too. Right. Great experience. Do you guys watch tape or your fights or your opponents? Yeah, I don't anymore, but I'm sure you right. I, I mean, to, I mean, like, I I like to study my guys. I don't know if you like. I no. mean, in the, at the heat of your game, like, were you? Did you study? I, I mean, like, I I like to like build that like uh, that unconscious thought, you know. I did so I know time. what they're doing before they, they well, do. Well, the thing, the, you know, the thing today, you have all, the players have access to tape while the game is going on. They can show you a mistake, but I think that the the reason I ask that because. Once you look at something, I think if you got to, your mind is wired right, you're you're going to forget that mm. because you know what he's going to do. If yeah. you watch it enough, you know what he's going to. You can anticipate certain things now. Yeah. Even though you might anticipate it, it's to, he might have a counter to some of the things you do. But yeah. there's a kid that in the uh, that's in um, in in your sport today that has always has real thin looking kid with different color hair. Oh yeah, is, is yeah. he talking about O'Malley? O'Malley, Sean O'Malley. 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 He's yeah. pretty. He's pretty good. Yeah. For, yeah. yeah, my buddy. My buddy is. I'm training with him. <laughs> oh fighting, yeah? he's fighting for the title. He's already beat him once. He's right. He's about to do it again. Well, good. <laughs> Cheeto <laughs> hey. Vera, Cheeto Vera versus Sean O'Malley. We're gonna make him shave his head. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Jerry, as we talk about basketball players, I know this is a very controversial topic and you have to be politically correct but something about michael jordan um that people always make this argument i'm sure the internet there's a million of these debates but everybody likes to make the argument that he did it in a shorter amount of time he did it with less help he did it with this and there's all these comparisons as someone who understands basketball probably better than anyone on this planet do you feel that michael jordan is is in a league of his own just because of the amount of championships he won in the time frame he did or do you feel that that quote about he played against plumbers and all this nonsense when the last dance came out is any of that real well again i would just uh when you talk about the three players we've talked about you know it's just a matter of what you'd want on your team it really is but in every era in the nba there's someone that stands above all okay all three of these guys stood above all and lebron is still going so um again it's just people that you know, like talk shows today, uh, some of them all they do is scream at each other. I like a, a real much more calm kind of conversation like this. Yeah. But in every era, you're going to have someone that's a dominant player. Look at Jokic today from Denver. He's he was great. what the 37th pick in the draft, the second round, and they traded their first round pick. It was a center also, <laughs> and kept him. And now. His name is Yerkes, uh, uh, and he plays for he. Uh, they traded him to uh, 
um, he's in he's in Phoenix now, and I know who. That tells you how people miss on players. Mm-hmm. One of the, I mean, he is really. If you're a teammate of his, oh my goodness, he makes the game so easy. He's just mm-hmm. one of those really gifted kids, and he's not, you know, he's not one of our elite athletes who have, you know, jumps in the thirty-eight to forty-five range. He's not one of those guys, but he is just amazing. And coaches, those are the kind of players that are coaches' dreams. Mm-hmm. How do you, how do you rate Curry? Uh, he's re- he's really good. Yeah. And you yeah. know what? He plays. It almost looks like he's playing a completely different game. Yeah. Than that. No, you know, guys try to grab him and hold him, and and one of the things that they do real well, and it's like the way they play. You cannot just stand back and wait on somebody. They're moving, cutting. Uh, they believe in ball movement, and he is his shooting ability is obviously is incredible. And I know him very well, and my son who works for the Warriors, they're friends. And um, it is just it's just amazing that somebody you look at him. If you saw him walking on the street and you didn't recognize him, and you say, "Well, that guy can't be a basketball player." Oh, he's a basketball player, all right? <laughs> and he decides the game himself. He, he just, I, w- I want to ask you about the, some, a little bit about history, like Wilt Will, Will Trainman. Was you there when he scored that that 100 points? No, but <laughs> it's a, a kind of a funny story. Uh, he was They played this game because, you know, teams didn't draw then, even with him. Mm. Um, he had been scoring so many points, and we were going to play at St. Louis, and St. Louis had St. Louis Hawks, which are now the Atlanta Hawks. Mm. And – we were talking. We didn't have a bus to pick up. We had there's a cab. We got cabs and went to the <laughs> hotel. So things just really changed. And uh, one, I think when I played, we had like covered wagons. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> I can't see you fitting in the cab. No, no, that's right, buddy. <laughs> well, it, no, there's some funny stories about that also. But Do I tell. think one of the things that was <laughs> really kind of Jesus. amazing about uh, him, we were talking. Going to the hotel in the cab, I said he. Two or three of us said he's going to score a hundred points tonight if he can make th- free throws. And I think that night he he scored a hundred points, but I think he made twenty eight out of thirty two free throws. That would never happen again in his life. He just was not a good free throw shooter. But his size and 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 uh, the lane I think was a little narrower then than it was today. Uh, he could touch the top of the backboard. No way. Oh yeah. But well, I was yeah. talking about jumping up. Yeah, jumping up. Yeah. I, was yeah. Gonna say, yeah. I mean, he's he was seven foot. That's crazy. Well, Speak. you know what? He ran like world record times in in the four forty. What? Uh, and through the uh, what Wait, javelin? Will Chamberlain. The shot. Will Chamberlain. Yeah. Oh yeah, when he was at Kansas, and uh, he. Wow, I did not know that. Oh <laughs> yeah, I mean, he threw the I think uh, either the shot or the javelin almost world record. Distance. And he, uh, even, he even fought Bruce Lee. What did he find a time to do all this? <laughs> well, I say some people are just gifted. Some people are just gifted. But he, um, he no, was. That wasn't him. He was. There's, I mean, he was amazing. There's one more stat about him I heard about. I mean, how many, uh, girl, how many girlfriends? Yeah, how many girls? Right. Hey. We don't believe that. Don't, <laughs> I, I know. Well, I, how many girlfriends? In my last hey. two or three years to, together, uh, once I was in Baylor retired, I think. Uh, we played together, I think, two more years, and he and I went on the road. We he was uh, he was really a nice guy. Yeah, and because of his size and everything, I think he stood out. It, and it's some some players at one time people weren't very respectable of size. They weren't, and uh, but we 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 had a lot of serious talks about things, and and uh, uh, we would have dinner in each other's rooms after games and stuff. And so that's why I don't quite believe this story. He, you know, he had a tendency to elaborate, uh, elaborate on things that, and make them bigger than life. And he told me that he drove from New York City to San Francisco in 24 hours. Wow. No. No. No chance. No chance. He said, well, I had a, he said he had a Ferrari. I said, I don't care. No. You can't do it. Can't do it because I'm from Memphis, and that's from Memphis to California is 24 hours. Right. All the way from New York, no way he can do that. No, no. How no does he way. fit in a Ferrari, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> Who, him? Like, yeah, well, yeah, all these players today, these big guys, they, Shaq, Shaquille he's O'Neal. He's got extended <laughs> cars, doesn't he? Shaquille O'Neal's mother bought him for a birthday uh, gift, a, uh, a, a, was it, I think a Bentley, and 
she put in the box, and he couldn't fit in it. So they have to take those to specialize the seating mm. in them because otherwise it wouldn't pass the eye test for the wow. uh, Department of Motor Vehicles. Mm. And in addition, he had these big boom boxes in behind it. And, I mean, you could hear him coming for a mile around. <laughs> he also rode a motorcycle, which not not in his con- in his, in his contract. contract. And he, can you imagine the size of Shaquille riding that? But you guys will love him. He's he's fun. Yeah, he's, he's fun. fun. He's, fun. A good, he's, he's a good. I was, I was at his party in, in at the Super Bowl. Oh, you were? Yeah, Shaquille uh, Funhouse or something like that. Right. Yeah. 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 He's was, uh, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. Yeah. yeah he really. Is. He'll send me a DM on Instagram every now and then, just random. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's him. Yeah. That's him. He's I get cool. a call. He and I are still pretty friendly, and uh, I get a call from him every, every once in a while. You know, yeah. and uh, we talk and converse. I told him, I said, my gosh. Where do you have time to do all the stuff you're doing today? <laughs> he's DJ, DJ, and he's and honestly, everything. Yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. also a great businessman. He owns a massive amount of fast food restaurants and chains and all kinds well, of that businesses. Well, was, that was really, yeah, the story on that was interesting. Yeah. Give and, it to us. Uh, as, um, with the pizza place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was some sort of, uh, uh, some sort of story that, you know, they were racist, okay? Mm. Papa and John. so they, and Shaquille, they went to him, and he is, as I say, he's just a phenomenal person. And that's how he got involved in that. Yeah. And that's how people believe in him. Yeah. But he's, you know, he would stop the bus and stuff when we're on trips, and he'd see someone homeless or something like that, mm. get off and give him money. Wow. And uh, he was, he's, he's one of the nicest people ever. How was Shaq in the locker room? Uh, I'm sorry? How was Shaq in the locker room? Rallied the team, or did he... <laughs> No, he was pretty quiet. Most players are pretty quiet before the game. I mean, it's just like, you know, and particularly when it gets closer to a game, more importantly, a big game. Uh, there was some extra adrenaline running around there mm-hmm. before a big game. And tell, tell Shaq next time you talk to him, whenever I go to Japan, people think I'm Shaq. Uh, so, I, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be pretending like, she get on there. I'm like, yeah, yeah, so come on. <laughs> well, you, you know what? You're not quite as tall as him. <laughs> I know. But but in Japan. Oh, yeah. Of, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, everyone's you Godzilla. <laughs> oh, hey, come on, Luke. That's messed up. Bro. called you Godzilla. <laughs> Luke that, just called you Godzilla. That, that wasn't cool, bro. You know, I've, been, I've been nice to you I all day. Call, I got called. What? I've been nice to you all day. <laughs> Yeah, I got called Bro, Godzilla you, you, one you time. You give him the worst nickname, and you, Matty, called you Godzilla. <laughs> I, I didn't give him no nickname. What's wrong with Godzilla? You, you trying to say I'm big? I'm big, ugly looking thing. <laughs> oh no! Nah, nah, nah. you know, did you know he's a model as well? Oh, him? Yeah, yeah. Luke's a model he's for a Ralph Polo Lauren. For for whom? Ralph Polo Lauren Boss. I did. I did. I, I did. Oh, some Frank Jackson stuff. Well, I, both I guys mixed are, it up. I mixed it up. You got to you well, you you change the game. I don't you guys are yeah. great look. Oh, thank you. My favorite. They. They, these two guys, they get all the ladies, and, I, and I'm kind of ugly out of the bunch, so they make fun of the way I look all the time. Right, okay. Yeah. What, what do you mean make fun of what you look? Cause they, they call me ugly. No, I never called you ugly. <laughs> <laughs> no, because when he walks in, when he has the scruff, I'm like, yo, you look like Greg Oden with the scruff, yeah, and then he, he gets all mad. Yeah, he have a, he knows that I'm not a pretty boy. He'll have a barber here sometimes. Right. Yeah. Just to just, clean him up a little bit. All right. Because he'll go three days in Vegas and then fly well, he knows in. how to. He knows how to. He knows how to because he's a model. Yeah, he knows how that's to do true. This stuff. Yeah, That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking, speaking of modeling, what do you think of his little mustache? <laughs> I, I just <laughs> forgot to shave it. I went with a pistol Pete. Hey. I went with a pistol Pete. That is, that's it, that's it. Kind of embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> embarrassing. You like the mustache? Yeah. Yeah. It looks funny, man. Hey, Should I go Yankees on him? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go get the barber. Yeah, get the barber, dude. Bring him in. We gotta shave it. Jerry says it's embarrassing. <laughs> well, actually, he, uh, he can't grow one. He's too young, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to. I was that's trying to first, get some facial hair. That's his first mustache. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I was trying to get some facial hair. No, yeah, he's just going to try to look get a rid of. <laughs> done. Consider it done. Yo, when Jerry says it's done, it's done. Call the barber. Uh, I think he's out of here. Listen, uh-huh. as, as we get close to wrapping this up, Jerry, one of the things I want to know is as a as a executive and someone in the NBA, who who are some players that you've seen just come through the NBA and, and really change the game? Like Steph Curry, I feel, changed the game with his shooting power and the way he just can toss from anywhere. But who's some players that people really don't see that get, get enough credit? Well, again, I think you have to go back to errors and the rules. Okay, I really do. Uh, you're going to see today. You're going to see very athletic players, and you know, in our league, they measure size of your hands and the your length. Okay, so 
if, if a guy is six five and his arm span are minus, you know, he doesn't have the reach. Yeah. And you watch the days today, uh, kids today, they're long, angular, athletic as heck. Um, the game is built differently, and it's built differently for Steph today. You know, one time he would, guys would be hanging all over him. And if he didn't have the, the way they play offense today, it would hinder him because, you know, he's just not one of those massive kids, uh, mm -hmm. young men. And, uh, but I think that the, the, the periods that uh, when you see the biggest change, uh, I think it started when, when, again, when we had started to have younger and younger players now. Um, you know, kids go to school today, and they make a lot of money for playing basketball in college today. And it's almost like recruiting. A guy can be at one school, and let's say he's really popular, and he might be making $750,000 so at the end of the season, they opt out of their deal like, like a player can if you have a player option, and they become, uh, they, they become free agents. They'll go to another school in the same conference because they pay them more. They don't want to talk about that. Yeah. Wow. But it needs college basketball. You know, the NCAA used to be the governing body. They still are. I don't know how you can um, – it's, it's like a professional sport today. I just wish that rules wouldn't change so often. And, uh, and mm -hmm. again, uh, the three-point line has changed the way this game is played. And we talked about it earlier, coaches and players, yeah. and particularly players. If you get in the wrong system, it might be not the system for him, but a Steph is just he's an incredible player, better person. You never find a better person. And he's, you know, he's looks like... Is that cute little kid out there in the court <laughs> yeah. who's cutting yeah. everyone's hair when he's don't, don't point to me. <laughs> don't point. <laughs> he's how, how, how much of your game do you think would have changed if you had the three point line? Like how much you think? Uh, that would obviously helped. you're a big shooter. That so would have, that would have helped me a lot. You uh, yeah. No question. And I also, I think the threat of it, if you can shoot it effectively and really well, uh, it it would enhance if you like to drive and go by people and get to the free throw line. Um, it would enhance your game, and that's what Steph has done. You know, around the basket, he knows how to finish off the board, and everyone's talking about how remarkable it is. It's something he works on, and he's got the skill to do it, and he does it every night. Really? Those crazy night. shots, he works on those crazy shots? Oh, oh yes. Well, well you hit like a 60-footer, didn't you? You hit a big buzz beater, didn't yeah. you? Like a famous 60-footer. Oh, footer. yeah, well. You know, do you, do you work on those? Do you work on those half-quarters <laughs> time to time? Well, they're not that hard. No, yeah. yeah. No, you are, are, the most difficult thing is to keep them on line. Oh. And, uh, you know, I watch players. I watch Steph go out there and shoot it. And, again, he's stronger than people think he is. I mean, he'll shoot it at court, and he'll make three or four in a row. Yeah. But he shoots the ball straight. Yeah. It's like free throws. If you can't shoot the ball straight in free throws, yeah. you have no chance to be a, a really good free throw shooter. Yeah, we see a lot of people, I, they get paid a lot of money. They don't know how to shoot free throws. <laughs> what about your routine? Do you have a routine when you threw, shot a free throw like that? I feel that's like kind of important, huh, maybe, to build a routine? I well, would, I, would I, used to, I used to take what, three dribbles, three dribbles, and, and I, I, wouldn't, I really wouldn't look at the basket. A lot of people look at the basket for I take three dribbles and just to kind of – Early in the game, you have so much adrenaline, you feel like you want to step across the line. Late in the game, when you're tired, you feel like you're, you don't want your head moving all over the place. And mm -hmm. that's kind of the key to balance everything mm -hmm. you do. If you, if you cock your head to one side, you can see your eyes are not level. Mm -hmm. And balance is the key to any sport. If you have bad balance, you're not going to be able to do some of the things that these extraordinary players do. And no one talks about it. They think you're crazy when you're talking about it. But yep. Just move your head forward or, and Stay even as good a shape as you are. But if you just cock your head one way, okay, mm -hmm. what do you look? Your eyes yeah. are like this, right? How yeah. about what's his name? He used to rub his face on the Utah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's like, something it, like that, right? Was it? <laughs> well, some of them, I mean, there's, there's a lot of weird things back in the day. Oh, yeah. Everyone has yeah. their own idiosyncrasies, yeah. of course. Did they put you in that video game? Um, two, uh, what was that 2K? What was that? The, uh, those NBA 2K? NBA 2K. Right? Oh, no, no. You're not a, like a character? No, no, well, no, I'm too old. No, but they can go back and get the old edition. edition. Well, they're not going to do that. With all these uh, with all these athletes we have to de today, mm. um, as I say, every era sparks, you're going to see probably, 
What's a heavyweight division for you guys? Well, well over anything over two hundred five, two hundred five, under two sixty five. Okay, and guys cut weight. Guys cut weight too. Like some. And what are you? What, like and and what, you what What is your weight? Uh, middleweight was one hundred eighty five pounds. I would have to make. Well, in between one hundred and two hundred five. Well, you don't have any little dudes fighting very much. Do you? <laughs> just, <laughs> just who you just met, triple champion. Right. Oh yeah, well, he's, he's, I've seen him fight before. He's good. Yeah, yeah. really good. He's yeah. Olympic champion. You yeah. told him he was too short to play basketball. That <laughs> yeah. was, that he's was right, unless he's got about a sixty-inch vertical. <laughs> I saw him walking. I saw him walking off crying after you said that. <laughs> he goes, he goes, Jerry West. It's a pleasure to meet you, Henry Cejudo. Super respectful. Jerry goes, Yeah, you too short. To play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> and he pat him on the head. Hey. Have you, well, have you ever oh, seen Rob, the basketball Rob. players now? Yeah. When they when somebody's guarding them in the post or something like that, and the same size and guy put his hand down like too small. <laughs> he puts I mean, his hand down like this and he's just too small. <laughs> <laughs> so they have basketball players are they have their own kind of um world they live in, uh, because I think you know, they watch, they learn from the older players. Mm -hmm. They have learned one thing that I wish they wouldn't do. They start bitching by the time they come into the no. league now. <laughs> and that is difficult to do to keep your concentration. It really is. And it's, you know, it's for officials. I probably would be an official would throw anyone out of the game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just say, if you don't respect me, how can I respect you? Yeah. yeah. The, last, the last thing I want to ask you, because I know we kept you here for too long. He might want something, but. Last thing I want to ask you was, how was Kanye West growing up? I heard you was his dad, and you was you was Kanye West's dad, like like Mr. Drummond from Different Strokes. Like you raised Kanye what West. What the hell is he talking about? <laughs> Kanye West. I don't know. He, I don't told, know. he told me you you, were, you, you was Kanye what? West's dad. You raised. No, him. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I, he he is a little bit different, and I'm a little bit different. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, why you? Why you? Why you? Like, hey, he said he was like the like really, Mr. Drummond from Different Strokes. Hey, yeah, and you, <laughs> you raised Kanye West. <laughs> on a, what you on, talking about? I don't know what he's talking about, but I'm more on a more relevant <laughs> pattern here. Um, I heard a rumor that I don't know if you can add any relevance to, it, but you might be passing the torch to, to Kobe on the on on the on the man on the emblem. Uh, is there any? Is there? I, any, is you there know, I, I like told you before. I don't really have any comment. On stuff like that, because oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's everyone. You could again. What? What about LeBron James? What about Kobe Bryant? What yeah. about? Mm -hmm. uh, what about uh, Michael Jordan? Um, what about the players are playing today? Oh, yeah. It's just impossible to keep doing things like that. Even, even it's just impossible. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. As we, as we get close to wrapping this up, it's an honor to have you here once again. And, and like we said, we wanted to kick off one of the non-MMA categories of, of podcasts that we do with someone as iconic as you. It's been, you know, just a blessing. We, we, we want to know something. Is it true that you are the reason why Clay Thompson stayed with the Warriors? Is it true that you blocked the trade or you walked in? No, I, heard, I heard you walked in the no, office no, and shut the door. That's not true. Uh, I, I think there was, you know, there was some... They were close to having a really good team up there and, and you know, younger players. Uh, but there was discussion uh, up there uh, from uh, when Bob Myers was general manager. But um, I think enough people had the foresight to see yeah. that that wasn't going to work for this particular team. Got it. Yeah. No, it makes sense. We, we definitely hear a lot of the influential moves you've had over teams when you've been a part of them. Especially when you when you went around and became an executive in the league. Well, I'm you know I say I've been a consultant except for Memphis and and uh, the rest of my career or, or I shouldn't create career because I don't it's never been any it's just a labor of love for me and it's not even a labor it's just something I've loved all my life and it's motivated me like like crazy even at my age today. Uh, I'm still really competitive in certain areas. Still shoot hoops? And uh, and watching players play, I can, you know, if I could just write about three or four things down about each player each night, maybe you could do this a little bit better. Oh, wow. Um, maybe you could be, you know, more alert to certain things. Um, I would do that, but that's not my, that's not what I do today. It's yeah. Not. No, it makes sense. I mean, Having you just involved with any team, though, I can see that the knowledge and, and the wisdom you bring to them is a huge blessing. Well, I've been privileged. Honestly, the, the places I've been involved with, incredible owners, I really have. Um, Jerry Buss was the most special one. 
because we spent so much time together uh, mm -hmm. at, at the office. And uh, and then now Steve Bomber is one of the nicest men I have ever met in my life, and he has done so much for society that people never knows because he and his wife are an incredible pair, and they they give, and they they give a lot, and they never publicize it. And I think that's the thing that that he's just a normal person, and he's a great guy. He really is. And I've been fortunate with Jerry and Steve and, and uh, the, the Joe Lake up in and uh, and the Warriors, and also um, the late Mike Heisley at at Memphis. Uh, those guys were all fantastic owners. Yeah. Mm. And, and it's cool to watch what, what Bomber's doing with the Clippers right now with their new stadium that they're about to open. Unbelievable, by State the way. Of the art. You, it's, it, you, you, you guys should have a fight there, okay? I'm serious. <laughs> that I, should be your next venue. Is it state of the art, I heard? Oh, my gosh. They have – you just have to go in there and see some of the stuff that's in there. You, you see it in Vegas over there, I, I, you know, that the sphere, sphere they yeah, have. Yeah. Yeah. One of the weirdest experiences, and I know we got to cut this off soon, but one of the weirdest experiences I've ever had was, as I say, I had to be up there – for one night and I was doing something the next morning and I had to leave. And, and I said, I'm just going to open a window look out. All of a sudden I looked out and there's eye looking at me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this gigantic eye. And I said, oh my gosh. But they can do anything. And he's got, wow. they have a huge score, uh, like not yeah. scoreboard, but um, a, a electronic device that runs screen, all the way yeah. around the, the uh, arena. Yeah. And I mean, this thing can do anything. Wow. I mean, it's it's amazing what they can do with these wow. with these things today. Yeah, unbelievable. It's cool that they're going to finally have their own their own stadium. Maybe, that, maybe, right. maybe their own arena will help them get a championship. Well, uh, that would be nice for yeah. him. I mean, you know, you you root for certain people, and one of the things I used to uh, root for I, I, the teams that haven't had success. It's nice because you know the fans become they come out and see the other mm -hmm. team. It's nice when they come out to see your team play. Mm -hmm. And you give them something to play for and a reason to play. Mm -hmm. Do you so, root for the Celtics? Uh, no, I don't. I don't wear anything green. <laughs> <laughs> we got you this green hat right here. Jay. Yeah, who put no, it that's not me. That's you guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, forget who, the green. Who brought the <laughs> green Celtics? <out? laughs> Jesus, so, guys. Uh, so I take it you don't go to the Masters golf tournament. <laughs> oh no, no, I've I've been there a few times. Um, <laughs> you golf. And, uh, I used to be a real good golfer. Yeah. yeah. Do you do any sports right now for a hobby for recreation? No, uh, no. I, I I sort of like to work out, and oh, nice. uh, I have a gym at my house, and uh, you know I have to be careful. I, I hurt myself yeah. by just trying to do something. So you're in great shape though for your well, age. Not you bad. Walk around, not you, bad. Not you bad. Talk great. Yeah. You, I yeah. don't see see you going anywhere. You look fantastic. Well, thank you. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. And but before we leave, last thing. Um, there's a rumor that there was a sparring match between Bruce Lee and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar at the Coliseum in L.A. Do you know anything about this? Well, you can see. There's pictures of that. Have you seen the picture? I That's why I got mixed up. I got him mixed up with Will Chamberlain. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kareem Abdul. Yeah, Kareem Abdul. Yeah, I got him mixed up with well, Will Chamberlain. it's yeah. like Bruce Lee's down here and yeah. Kareem's way up here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. I just saw them that where they were. Uh, you know, when one last thought about uh, Will Chamberlain. You know, he and he was talking. They were talking about him fighting Muhammad Ali. What? Wow! That yeah. would have been huge. Wow! And I could just hear Ma Ma Muhammad Ali, Tim Burr, <laughs> 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 bang when he knocked him out. Uh, no, there's you know these these wow. guys in all sports they want to try something today. You know, I wonder, I wonder what Will's his reach was. Oh, big! <laughs> Probably like ninety. Who that? Will, Will, Will Chamberlain. Yeah. You know, Will like, Chamberlain, Abdul Jabbar's reach was I think ninety two. Jesus. Will Chamber is like 101. Oh no way. God. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine That's that. big. Imagine That's a huge difference. 101 is big. Oh, Imagine yeah. That yeah. Jab, the like, <laughs> where are we at? Hey, 101, you ain't, you ain't doing anything yet. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yo, it is, it's just been a pleasure and an honor to sit here with you, sir, and uh, just to hear about these stories and kind of just get an inside look on, on one of the greatest basketball minds of all time. This is phenomenal for our community, for us, for me personally. I can't thank you more than enough. Well, I thank yeah. you guys. And come and watch this training. And, and again, I will, yeah. I will do that. Yeah. Yeah. I will do that. I like to watch what you guys do and the teaching aspect of it. If you're working with someone, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I can't imagine working with someone and have to fight them. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, like, it's like beating your brother up. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I've done it a couple of times. I had to fight people that I like. And oh, stuff like okay. That. Yeah. It's it's hard. It is. Yeah. My last fight, uh, I had to fight my favorite fighter. He was my favorite. It's hard. You get out there. And just, Who was your favorite fighter? Fedor. Okay. Fedor. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that guy was a beast. Yeah. <laughs> but he, <laughs> he, he fought too long. Yeah, he did. Early yeah. on, he knew we could beat him. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Absolutely. He, yeah. Oh, he knows his he shit. Knows, hey, yeah. He's a sports. Yeah. He is one of the greatest sports minds of understanding <laughs> players. The guy understands, like he said, something you said that I'm going to remember for a long time. It's it's the things that you can't see, yeah. and I feel like that's what makes you so great as an executive. That's why you're beloved by everybody in the game. It's he sees things in players. You yeah. know, Kobe, Clay, Kawhi, just yeah. things that people can't see and Pete. He brings it out of them. It's yeah. unbelievable. And invite him to a uh, UFC event one time. Next yeah. time I have one. He'll, he'll invite us to the Clippers floor seats. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can. Get, I can do that. No. Oh, yeah. well, hello. Yeah. Hello. Jackson, we'll sit with you. That'd be phenomenal. Hey, we hey, got security. Let's, let's, let's no, I, I you want to you wanna come to the fights with us? This we going to the fights this Saturday to kick somebody off and bring him. Yeah, no, we got, I, I'm going. I'm going to. Um, it's an All Star break coming up Wednesday. Oh, okay. So. I'm, I'm, I've already made plans. Okay. Oh, yeah. Saturday, Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. Oh, we got okay. Matt, we, yeah. one of our athletes is Mac McClung. He's in the slam dunk contest. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. No. He, yeah. He's yeah. a. I think it's a, it's amazing how he's sort of not given up on his career, Amen. and uh, it just his. He cares. Before we leave, do, is there a reason why you think he doesn't have a spot on the team? Because he keeps getting these two way deals. Well, I think size probably really more than anything. That's, that's normally my problem. Yeah. I mean, it, it, how would you like to be 6'4"? I would love to have been 6'4". Well, I sure, I'd probably have been better. Yeah. I could have beat John Jones if I was 6'4". Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's saying a lot. Yeah. yeah. He, he, I think he's never lost except no. that one disqualification. Yeah. I would have, if I was 6'4", yeah, I would have beat him. Yeah, human statistic. Dude, yeah. your knowledge, Yo, your knowledge yeah. of the game did is you, insane did, of, of, every, of every game. Did you, did you see my fight with him? When I fought John Jones, and, you know and, something? I don't think I did. Yeah. I don't think I did. Well, it was a dirty. He was a dirty bastard. He kept poking me in my well, eye. He, yeah, that's what he's known for. Yeah, kicking my knee backwards. Mm. If I was if I was six four six five, I would have beat him. No right. way, I would have lost. Right. I, that was my first time having deal deal with that length. Right. So I, I got the, I got that part down right the stand up, but what I didn't prepare for was the jujitsu. I didn't have a long guy like that to right. do jujitsu with, and that's how he got me. He well, he's quick me. as heck too. Yeah. You know the. Quickness in anything, but quickness is part of anticipation. You talked about, you know, we were talking about, I asked you if you watch films. You know, I used to have my, my mind was my film, okay? Because I, at that point in time, you didn't have all this information available. And so you could anticipate certain players and, and it just, you were there waiting on them and, it John, helps, regardless of what the skill. It helps to know what someone's doing. Yeah, John. Know, John used to take it to another level. Like he would start to study your family. Yeah, oh, yeah <laughs> like yeah. like he'd like yeah, I just got his skills. Like he like he he was like he was proper a, obsessed with rampage and like he was he's a little. He scared didn't know he didn't know much about my family. I kept a lot of my stuff. Private. He, he went. He, he tried to go. He tried to dig deep. Yeah, know? he does. Like he's, right. he's that what, type. What if I get that new surgery where they make you taller and I go back and kick his ass? What do you think about that? Well, they got the surgery. They girl. They make you Negroes. Hey, they make you Negroes. Hey. They, make you Negroes. <laughs> they the new surgery. I don't. They can turn. They make you Negroes. I can't come. They got. They cut. They do. They do it mostly in Asia and stuff. The you knee can, make can you grow, but <laughs> they do. They do. They do it. It's. It's a. It's. You know. In. Well, particularly in, in over in Asia over there, they do all kind of things yeah. uh, medical, uh, yeah. medically, and then. Go to Germany. They're like a you done cutting st- edge a sport for. I mean, studies for athletes. Yeah, I'm gonna do that and do stem cells. Yeah, you, oh, you, yeah. you well, I'll cells, tell you Jay? one thing, damn thing. You better get out of your wheelchair when you. <laughs> okay, before you go back in those times. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, one thing that you just brought up, I gotta ask since he's here, and this is just phenomenal. I, you just brought it to my mind, Jerry. What do you think is the next biggest country besides the U.S. in producing top talent for the NBA? Well, there's three countries in particular. Oh, wow. I think Africa, the USA, Africa, and they usually come through. They usually uh, migrate through uh, uh, France, and then also Canada. No one ever talks about Canada. Canada. There's a bunch of really good players in the league. Shea Alexander. Oh, yeah. He's one of the best players in the NBA. But there's a bunch of kids from Canada, and also Australia. Oh wow, Australians are big, and you know, I think 
last thought I'm going to give you because we go on forever. But uh, I remember why, uh, why when in England at one time they used to send their prisoners, uh, people who were convicts, they'd send them to uh, Australia. Uh, to me, I, I would want to be a convict so I could get sent to Australia <laughs> rather than England. <laughs> yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice island to live on. Yeah, but but you know, in England, can't nothing kill you but yourself. But you go to, you go to um, you know, like there's no, there's the no, clouds. Yeah, no, there's no alligators, there's no poisonous snakes, no spiders. Where, where is that? In England. But in oh, yeah. Australia, it's all that, all that dangerous animals and stuff that can kill you. So they don't have, and, and they and, have more, they have more, uh, uh, more poisonous snakes in Australia, and also they have really problems with um, frogs, pigs, sharks, cats. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not cats. Pigs and sh- uh, uh, oh my goodness, the, the um, toads. The cane toads are crazy. All, all kind of wild kangaroos. animals, yeah. uh, uh, and camels even. In Australia, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. And so they're they're really everyone's complaining. They want to cull the herds so they'll be controllable. Yeah. It's, and and you get my mind going. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I'm, I, I have all these trivia things I have in my mind. It's still there. All right, we'll give you one more your before we leave. You can give us any trivia you want, then we're signing off. We got to get you back home to your, your all-star party. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're signing off. Listen, guys, this is Jerry West, one of the greatest ever to do it. I'm Barry DiGidio, Rampage Jackson, Luke Rockhold. This is the Jackson Podcast. Thanks for watching. 